Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing the exciting part of the Unify EV charger station. We're going to be installing it. Before this video begins, I do want to quickly mention that I'm now offering IT and network consulting. Um, I do a lot with Ubiquity, Free Radius, Proxmox, anything you can think of. It's all on my website, so go check it out and I look forward to working with you. This is the fun part for you guys to watch, but the unfun part for me to actually do. I'll be doing the installation completely by myself with the help of my dad. Uh, we're not going to be hiring an electrician to do this. This is going to be solely done on my own. In this first part of the video, I'm going to go over kind of the electrical setup, how we're going to be doing things. So kind of as previously mentioned, we are going to be as adding a sub panel into the garage, and then we're going to be running a wire from the sub panel over to the charger. So we're going to do a 100 amp service over to the sub panel. From there, we will then go into the garage. I guess the sub panel is in the garage, but the sub panel would then go to the charger over about a 50 amp uh, breaker, 40 amp cable, whatever, um, getting over to the charger and then that's how we'll get the power over to the charger. So um, due to the uh, length of this project, uh, it has to go completely across the house, probably over 100 feet, I think it was like 125 feet actually, um, to take the 100 amps from the main uh, panel to the sub panel. So we had to go with a pretty large wire. This is a 622 aluminum cable, I believe it was um, pretty expensive. It was a Southwire 2224 stranded aluminum SER cable. Um, it was a really thick cable. Um, and that's what we did. That's what we ran from the main panel to the garage. It was about $2.40 a foot. Um, we got probably 100 and something feet of that. Um, we got more than we needed intentionally because I did not want to have not enough cable. That would have not been fun. Um, from there, we got a Square D um, 100 amp sub panel with like 24 spaces or something in it, 12 to 24. I forget what it was. Um, a smaller panel, but um, it could be the main panel of some houses. Uh, it was it's big enough that it could be a panel. Um, and then next we got a uh, breaker. So we got a 50 amp breaker on the sub panel going over to the charger. Um, we could have done up to a 70 amp breaker, um, but because of the way the charger works, actually the EV charger, um, if you go with a higher, uh, if you want a higher amperage into it, you'd actually have to go with a different type of wire that would have to be inside of conduit, um, which is fine. This is used mostly in commercial environments, but um, to get this wire to actually uh, get fit, I guess with code, you'd have to run it inside of conduit. So we didn't want to do that. So we got the highest rated wire we could run outside of conduit, which happened to be this 62 Romex cable. Um, and that was stuff was expensive. It was about $4 and something a foot. Um, four dollars and some change per foot uh, it was a 62 romex it's a copper cable um, it's the real deal it's probably 75 feet is what we got something like that it's 200 something dollars um, so that's kind of that's what we got there from the sub panel to the charger um, and that just is direct wire into the charger there's no plug and nothing like that in between literally just the wire from the breaker straight over to the charger uh, that worked out really well that was a pain to install um, let's talk kind of now about the installation. This installation was not fun. Um, thankfully, my dad was super helpful. Uh, we got it done really quickly, I'd say. Um, it only took probably a day total of work, which is really slow considering it was just uh, a charger install, but we've never done any cable runs like this at home before. I've done stuff with ethernet before, but electrical is just a little different um, because we wanted to strap it up nicely, make it all look good. Um, in the basement, of course, the rafters were going the opposite direction, so we couldn't just run it straight down the rafter. We had to run it in between all of them, so we had to drill probably at least 30-something holes to get in between all of them. It, it wasn't super fun. Um, and then we, of course, had to go up from the basement into the garage. Hey guys, so we have made it to the spot we are putting um, the cable up from the basement. So I've got the whole wire on the ground. Way too much wire than what we actually need because purposely over-ordered instead of under ordered. Um, but we have a stake that I pushed up there so we can kind of feel out the area. Which I cannot tell you how I did it. I perfectly landed that uh, drill. I drilled it, didn't measure it. I literally just drilled it up from the basement to the garage, landed it perfectly. Um, I was pretty proud of that moment. Okay, so we just ran the wire through. Obviously it's a little dinged up. I don't think it's going to compromise the wire. It's just the casing. So. The wire's going up in the hole. Right now we're trying to deal with the turn. So the wire's kind of looming up there. It's kind of annoying, but I think we'll be able to sort that out. Um, and then also, I from the attic uh, to drill down for the charger cable, also landed that absolutely perfectly. I don't know how in the world that happened. Um, I barely could find the spot in the attic, but I just picked a spot and I stuck with it. Drilled all the way through. It was probably 12 inches of beams that I had to drill through. Um, I had to get like an extension bit and everything. It was crazy, but 
um, I literally landed that perfectly. Now I say perfectly, there's like a, um, like a nine or something inch, or actually it was 14 inch range that I could hit um, horizontally and probably a three inch range vertically um, that I could hit to land it within that range of the studs. So I did it perfectly though. It was literally dead center of the stud both times. I was really proud of that one. Um, I would probably never get to do that again because I don't think I trust myself enough to do that again, but it, it literally worked out great. Um, so we barely made any holes in the wall. We did make a couple holes to get the wire back down for the charger. Um, and those are just something that we'll need patched up. We'll have a drywall guy come do that probably. Um, but it was only two holes we had to do. So at the end of the project, we had the electrician come um, as kind of a friend of ours. Thank you, Noah, by the way, amazing work. Um, so nice that you did this for us, but Noah came, he hooked it up um, professionally and he made sure all of our work was to code, which thankfully it was. So that's really cool. Um, and Noah also switched uh, our main panel. We took some breakers, switched them to tandem breakers. That way we had some space for the 100 amp breaker then to sit. That way we could run that over to the panel, which the panel is full, which is absolutely crazy because it's a new construction house. How is it full already? I don't know. We've barely added onto it. I don't know how it's full. Now let's talk about the charger. So the charger itself um, is it's pretty legit. I mean, it's a ubiquity product, really solid. It's exactly what I'd expect. The Unify Connect implementation of it's also really sweet. You get all kinds of like cool graphs. Um, for me, the graphs don't matter because it's just, it is what it is. Like we're gonna, we're gonna charge it. The statistics don't really matter. Um, but I can log in, I can tell you, we um, charge for um, 28.64 kilowatt hours, um, which we pay 15 cents per kilowatt hour. So we've only charged for about $4.30 so far. Um, we've charged two sessions, total charging time of about three hours. And um, yeah, really cool. This is something that would be really neat if we had multiple chargers, because then you can actually do like load sharing. So um, Unify Connect actually lets you load balance the chargers. So if we had a 100 amp connection to both of them, then we could say, okay, you can, if we had like a 70 amp connection to both chargers, 100 amp to the sub panel, we could say, don't go above 100 amps. Um, and then it will actually load balance them between the two chargers and like go up to 70 amps if the other one's not charging, all that kind of stuff. Really, really cool stuff. Um, not necessary for this. Like I said, this is a more of a commercial product um, and we are not really using that to its full advantage in that sense. The setup was really easy. It was just through the app like normal, um, just as you would expect with any other Ubiquiti product. Really straightforward. Did a firmware update automatically. Um, it literally just works. I mean, there was no fidgeting with it. Um, the setup in terms of like setting your breaker size was so easy. Like they've totally streamlined that process, made it like super easy. Pretty much anybody could do it. That is pretty much all I have to say. I do want to thank you guys for correcting me in the previous video saying that these chargers are not doing any kind of AC to DC conversion. These are just AC to AC chargers. Um, I apologize for that. I totally thought these were doing some kind of DC conversion for the batteries of the EVs. But um, as you guys corrected and pointed out, these chargers actually just pass the AC power through um, to the car and the car is what does the DC conversion at the end. So really interesting, all kind of new to me, all really cool to me. And yeah, so you guys, if you have any questions about the Ubiquiti EV charger, more about the wiring that I did, anything like that, please leave a comment down below. Um, I think this is a really cool learning experience for me and my dad, um, great time that we spent together putting this up. And overall, really rock solid of a project. I think we nailed it. And uh, yeah, so I want to share this project. I hope it gives you kind of some inspiration for things you could do. Um, it's actually not that hard. And yeah, so thank you for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you all in the next video.